Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today we will be talking about Ope shutting down its verticals, Beyonce's new album, which I'm sure you've heard of, and then Festus Kayamo fighting the Senate because they are at war over who will chop our money. <laughs> welcome to Aka Banks. Welcome to my channel. And please, guys, if you haven't subscribed, please do. I want to just take the time to appreciate everybody else who subscribed over the last week and the yeah, about well, the last week, a couple of days. I see you all, I appreciate you. And to everybody who, you know, has been subscribed, keep watching my content, you keep posting, you give me the needed juice, the needed ah. juice that I used to, you know, put this out. Thank you so much. And please give us that thumbs up because we really do need it. First on today's news, thing is over the last couple of days, Ope, which is an African super app, that was able to service like different sectors of the economy at the same time literally the technological representation of an octopus <laughs> they had o mall o ride o bike o food o everything well they live they've literally just announced that they will be shutting down business because of the harsh business environment in nigeria and because of the covid pandemic they will be shutting down their non-fintech vertical so except their online banking platform offline and online banking platform you know now this for a lot of nigerians on twitter was crazy it, it trended because a lot of people know of the kind of money and infrastructure sweat blood that these people put into making their business a success these people have literally like sank in about a hundred million dollars of investment money or they had at their disposal anyway but I think they did everything possible to make this not happen. Well, the announcement drew a lot of reactions from Nigerians, and I will be reading to you just a few of them. So basically, let me read their first um, statement from Ope. We can confirm that some of our business units, including the ride hailing service, O Ride, O Car, as well as our logistics service, O Express, will be put on pause. This is largely due to the harsh business conditions which have affected many Nigerian companies, including ours, during this COVID-19 pandemic, the lockdown, and the government ban. So, I mean, the government banned, you know, people from moving, but also Lagos banned bikes, you know. Globally, ride-sharing businesses have been heavily impacted by the pandemic, but several months ago, foreseeing this issue, Opay had already taken preemptive steps to restructure our business focus away from the rides. It is worthy to note that this final restructuring has minimal impact on Opay as a whole business. It is important to clarify that this that ride sharing has always been only one part and not majorly uh, a major part of OPE's diversified business in Nigeria. In fact, OPE had been investing more and seeing accelerated growth in the commitment to Nigeria's financial and technological inclusion. During the pandemic, we have seen continued demand, continued demand for our of offline mobile money agency and online digital payment which remain the core of our business from january to april 20th for example we witnessed a 44 percent growth of offline and online transactions value even in the midst of pandemic and lockdown this is a testament to the high demand for flexible and easy financial services by nigerians ope remains one of the most well-funded and profitable mobile money platforms in Nigeria and we will continue to do more for our customers. Lastly, Ope will continue to invest in and grow in the e-commerce space, aligning its customer and business e-commerce units which will continue to operate and grow. We believe a financial platform coupled with goods platform will form the future of Nigeria technology development. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> so I mean, um, a lot, a couple of Nigerians had stuff to say and you know, Shay Fimi put out a tweet and it was like, oh why? Oh, buddy. Oh, left. Oh, titan. Oh, bad. Oh, sad. Oh, critical. Oh, gao. Oh, ma show. <laughs> like a company as huge as Ope puts out a statement like this, and Nigerians don't even have chill. Like I feel like this is something we should be sad about because Ope, believe it or not, like them or not, I don't even know or know why anybody should hate them or not like them. But they did provide jobs to hundreds of people. You know, whether people who were riding the bikes, people who were delivering, people who were working in the offices, and then all that all that's gonna shut down. That means there are more people who are gonna go home and not have jobs. And but they have to pay school fees, they have to put food on the table. It's crazy that this COVID-19 has really affected every single sector. 
you know, we were actually even thinking that logistics and delivery sectors were actually the ones that were doing so good, and especially all food, because I mean, I have a couple of friends who are in the food industry now, just like, ah, now, now, where they catch out now, everybody's buying food, you know, delivery, but at some point, you know, especially when people don't have money, they're not earning money, they're going to stop ordering for food, you know, and then it's going to be reducing from maybe three times a week to once a week, and then next thing, once a month. So I really feel like it's affecting everybody and I, we all came from a place where we thought that, ah, by June, whoa, COVID for belief. But no, it's still here. Uche Chuku Wapra says, this is bullcrap. Even if you want to shut down some sections of your service, Oka should be part of it. You want, so you want to seed all your customers to taxify and Uber. Just give Oka at least six months for final assessment in Lagos. If it doesn't work, then you go. I think he's a rider. I think he's somebody who I, I think he right he has a car operating under OPE and he doesn't want them to go, you know. Somebody responded and said, You think they've not thought about it? Woo! Nigerian Ahmad Wabubakar, he sees the statement and the first thing he does is transaction ID 20062609231115 Amount 22,000 service electricity time June 26, 2020, 1722. Have been asking for the pin of this transaction, and you people didn't do anything. Is that how you treat customers, sir? We just said that we are shutting down, and we've not even heard you say sorry. Post OP says, Hi, Ahmed. I'm sorry for the inconveniences experienced while using our platform. A response has been sent to the DM as regards your complaint. Kindly check and to confirm. Regards, Mr. Olaf. <laughs> I really need POS for this, for my agent account, please. It's really affecting me. Really. Holy says, a fraudster hacked into my 74-year-old dad's account and cleared up all the money we worked so hard to save. Investigation has been, has been done by his bank and the fraudulent withdrawals was traced to an OP wallet. Name and phone number withheld for now. Any chance to trace the culprits? Hi, Abian Duke. Thank you for contacting us. A response has been sent to your DM as regards your complaint. Can't you check it to confirm? Can regards AM. <laughs> Nigeria. I tried to recharge my glow line from my OPE this afternoon and this is what I got. The money has not credited to my glow, glow line and it's not even usable on the OPE app. The money is just hanging there. What can I do, please? I need you to advise me on such. OPE 2. I'm sorry for the difficulties experienced. Can they refer to your DM? Response has been provided. Regards. AM. Woo! Ola says, the POS has not been working for over three days now. What's going on? Omo Yemi says, it's working now. He says, thanks, it's now working. <laughs> oh my god, Nigerians. Benway Giant says, I think Nigerians' slogan should be called, should be changed to kill the dream. This story of OPE is really sad. Okay, let's do a quick match now. The government stopped OPE. Stop OPE did not create jobs. OPE works Workers retire home with hungry families. The kids are unable to go to school and start working on anything. Then they grow up without education and become users into society. Some become armed robbers, some become sex workers. Either the armed robbers attack someone close to you or the sex workers infect someone close to your to you, a virus or disease. If we are if we are to trace the source of our societal problems, who the F actually caused it? Renu says, Omo, Nigeria ruined o ruined OP. Despite the amount of money and energy these guys invested into their, their business, how can the government be so wicked and inconsiderate? And you know, this is, this, is, this is one of the things why I feel like a lot of people are losing faith in the country because even when you try to do legal business, do all the right things, pay all the right dues, the millions of dues that they will bring upon you, sign all the right papers, the government in the next week, by the, in fact, the next week, the next day can bring up a decree a law, pass a law that can destroy everything you have worked so hard to build and by the same people who gave you all the necessary, um, you know, encouragement to continue in the business. So it is the same government that helps you to establish your business. When I mean help, I mean they're the ones who will give you sign, tell you, give you all the documents you sign, give you all the necessary papers, you know, approve all the necessary documents and all of that. Make sure that you're right, which you will heavily pay for. And then the next day, the same people are going to be part of people that will bring you down, tear you down, because a law has just been passed that it is not allowed for you to do this business anymore. So it's such a volatile business environment in Nigeria. And so it leaves people to wonder. 
If a business that, that should, in a sane community, in a sane society, thrive by all means, with everything they put into place and everything they had at their disposal, if that business can fail, then in Nigeria, what has the chance of succeeding? So, do businesses that succeed, and we're not saying that there aren't, there aren't businesses that succeed, but do businesses that succeed, succeed by chance, or because the government has not set eye on that industry? Because we know that any time the government sets eye on a particular industry, it most likely is to bring it down. I mean, right now, the kind of issues we're having in the media and film industry now, because the government has realized that, ah, Money they come through Nollywood. The kind of laws they have been trying to pass and people are shouting no. It is stuff that will even bring the industry down. And you're, you're asking, you never helped to bring the industry up. You never helped or gave incentives to encourage our industry. This is the blood and sweat of nine Nigerians, private people, human beings. And now you want to step in. You're now doing things that will bring us down, bring the business down. So you, you're left to wonder if you want to even invest or work in this country. Bio says this OPE ish is one of the reasons why so many youths have thrown their ideas of starting a business away. What I was saying. So many promising brands and organizations being ruined by the nation. So many talents and ideas dead. Sledge says, I know a bike man who made around 1,005 per day before the arrival of OPE. OPE came and Baba started making around 7k a day. Life started changing. Fast forward to today's headline. Tears. You know, the thing is, the thing that this will most affect is the Nigerian man, the rural, poor Nigerian man. Most times when the government makes laws, they don't take into account how it will affect the, the normal, average Nigerian. What is this going to do to the Nigerian man? I mean, most of us are not working in open. Oh, well, I'm good, but you got to think of the effects, that this, the ripple effects that this will cause. And now the only thing they want to focus on is fintech, which will have less human staff working for them. So sad to hear the decline of OPE. I remember always indicating to a friend about the possible success of any startup in Nigeria, especially LG. Everything may look good on paper, or you may have the working prowess, but Nigerian government kill dreams they are not earning directly from. That's the truth. If the Nigerian government isn't earning directly from something, they're like middle finger. I don't know what must have transpired with OPE issue, but it, it, is, it is sad and we, we definitely need to talk about it. And the fact that a lot of people are saying this kind of thing, it means that so many Nigerians have lost trust in their government to even have their back or fight for something that's good. I mean, when the auto automobile industry was taking a dive and failing in the United States, what did Obama do? What did the government do? They had to sit down with all, you know, automobile, you know, companies, the execs, and it's, I mean, they had to intervene. There was a government intervention to make sure that they didn't crash, they didn't stop, they didn't fail. Why hasn't the government said, oh, pay, come over? Is it only Dan Gote that things will be working for because he are his friends with all the people in the government? Come on, man. If you want the economy to thrive, it must thrive for everybody. It must be good for everybody. If I say everybody. Everybody working in, in every sector. Not just a few. Imagine a company like OPE failing after spending close to $100 million in investment. Come, how much do you want to spend on that your business again? This country will disgrace you. It will make you look like you're useless when we keep voting idiots to office. And that's the truth. At the end of the day, we Nigerians are the ones that cause it. We cause it, my dears. Yes, please. Vote for the right person. Don't follow Agbeiru to go and vote for... The next politician that they shout again. Are you hearing me? Because these Aguerros are being paid and they don't care about the future of this country. They don't care. I've now realized that Aguerros don't care. They just want to be collecting their pay from the politician every month. Or their Oga will be settling them. They have their ways of doing what they're doing. But I mean, they just look after that money and they will bring, they will kill anybody or carry any ballot box necessary to make sure that they get their goals. So don't follow anybody. See, next time. When we are voting, vote with your brain. Vote with prayers. The Bible says, watch and pray. <laughs> Baldy Lock says, Opay was one of the few companies that gained that gainfully employed lots of young Nigerians before the bad government policies and greed killed it. But APC will tell you, this administration is creating jobs because of temporary minimum wages schemes like Empower, and people will cheer them. 
Wale Ade Otu says, from Ope to Opar, Ope shut down its businesses in Nigeria to join the likes of Dunlop and Co. Even if we find solution to our power problem, companies will be afraid to come to Nigeria. And every time Nigerian government is always screaming, invest in us, foreign investment. Come and bring your dollars here. We are a viable economy. Viable, my heart. Somebody received bad boost. <laughs> Duke of Ibadan says, OPE should launch OPAC to keep Nigeria's clean. <laughs> Alaji gave him, I think OPE should launch all sense for people like you with no sense. Why so harsh? Why so big? A Nigeria ruined OPE. Imagine using their bikes and beating traffic plus cost. This country just wants us to suffer. Jemima says, they said OPE is shutting down all more. All right, all food, and all the other acts. And Nigerians are replying with O Dabo, O Tito, O Bagum. <laughs> Where's the sense of humor from, please? Oh my god. Somebody says, Oh wow, that's so crazy. Wow, oh, that's wow. so crazy. That crazy? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, a friend of mine, Folu, he put out a tweet in way back in May and he says, you know, he people like him never imagined that a day will come when this kind of thing would happen. To be honest, I would never have thought about it too. He says, don't let the small screen of bad PR distract you from the insane traction OPE is having. They're, lit they, they're literal business hydra with infrastructure, distribution and money. Lots of it. If I was a betting man, I will put my money on them. Fast forward to today. But I mean, we live in a country where anything is possible. And I guess what um, I'm trying to say is laws aren't set for the betterment of the people, but for the few. If the betterment of the people comes with, you know, with it, that's fine. But that's a secondary or maybe a tertiary, you know, side effect or spill off. But it's hardly the main goal that a law should cater for the, Niger the average Nigerian man when laws are passed by the, your lawmakers that you put in power. Government and economic policies are actually formulated and modified for the benefit of just the 1% of the few in power and their friends. And so guys, because if, if this were any same country, OPE should be sitting down with the Senate right now, called by the government. How do we see how we can make this work? But that's not the case. This government, this business, has provided jobs to hundreds and maybe hundreds of hundreds of people, put food on the table of thousands of people. Well, let us just hope, let us hope that as they focus on fintech, which the report has been a success, then it will succeed in all of that. I mean, um, I think that's the end of this particular topic, but and again, because I said this is the country where anything is possible, so I mean, it's very possible that they will now succeed above their wildest dreams. It's just that you know this country is so is it the volatile volatility can work for your good or for your bad. It's always on the extreme. There's never a middle ground, you know. So um, let's just pray that you know um, we just all get that kind of business that will give us the kind of good that Indomi gave its owners. God, Indomi got Pablo Escobar kind of money in this pandemic. Everybody bought Indomi. Every living soul, every living soul, but in Domi. <laughs> but, um, you know, we want that kind of money that will just be minty. Well, we at Akabans wish all pay huge success in all their endeavors and their future plans. I mean, hope that you guys succeed and, you know, business is business. Now, I know, talking about the next news, I know some of you must have seen a clip of Beyonce's trailer to her new album. Her visual album is called Black is King. Okay? And she released this on the backdrop of her last album, which is uh, called The Lion King, The Gift, which she says is, was meant to be a gift to Africa. And in her own words, describes it as a labor love. Well, she's put out the trailer to her new song, Let's check it out. Now, seeing this trailer drop, people have shared their differing opinions on how Africa was portrayed by Beyonce in this visual album. Now, there are two sides of the poll. Some people are on it on the ex it's, they are on literally two extremes, and I mean, I guess there are a few people who are like, nah, whatever. But one side of the poll thinks that 
it is very problematic uh, for African Americans to continue representing Africa in a way that is Wakandanized. Do you understand what I'm saying? Did you watch Black Panther the movie? Yeah, Wakanda. Yeah, if you've seen that. So they think it is better for black Americans and people of color and even the world at large to see Africa as a real place with regular people who wear regular clothes and drink coffee and go to work. And to be honest, I agree with them. Like, there's no reason why I should even, you know, um, not agree with that. And I'm sure you do too. But that's just one point of view of the divide. Now, the other polling sides, the other polling side says that you should not bring down an African American trying to find their roots and be proud of the little they have found by saying that you don't like what they're doing or how they're representing you or how they're connecting with their roots. African Americans don't know their roots and have a vast majority of them feel lost and they want to identify with whatever understanding of Africa they can find because they don't have anything else. And I agree with this too. Right? Somebody will say, God, Aka, which one are you? You agree with the other one, you agree with this one. Well, let me tell you something. It's partly not their fault with these people who are African Americans trying to connect. African culture and history isn't documented and this has been a major problem for both Africans here and Africans in diaspora. And so they have to build their connection to whatever scraps of fantasy that the media and Hollywood films like Coming to America and CNN have built for them and has given them because the educational system teaches them nothing about their roots. So we, for the longest time, haven't been telling our own stories. And even now, right now, even with the kind of movies and documentaries we put out, we tell our half-baked stories, westernized, watered-down stories, which don't do anything to help Africans see who they really and truly are. Because even us here, we hardly have know ourselves. We've lost connection. Watching the Black Panther made me feel like I remember that time when it came out. I was like, damn, these people see a futuristic Africa more than even us. It's like they know more than we know ourselves. They know us. That film showed me like how we were meant to be. It's like they were saying to us, these are how you people are meant to be, but you are your politicians. Always shalaye. So now film will end. I mean, Hollywood did the same thing for America for years, painting it as a land of opportunity, painted it as this land that is free and greener on the other side, and anybody who comes here is going to make it. They put up and set up huge schemes that were successful, like the lottery system that took a lot of Nigerians and Africans over there. But all they were doing, basically, was plowing the best heads and strongest minds and bodies and human resources of Africa and taking them there to till the grounds and work menial jobs that they didn't want to work in. That's all they were doing. And they were selling to us a story, making us hungry to go there and making us forget to plow our own land. In the last couple of years, the image of every black hero basically has been tarnished or destroyed. While the white counterparts, no matter whatever they did, have been preserved, eulogized, and even some of them have been made martyrs. But I'm not going to say more than that. Thank you. Now let's go back to the first point of the people who were talking about Wakandanization of Africa by the African Americans. I don't think it's the African Americans doing this, but I will say I support that view too because when it comes down to Beyonce, I want to add that she's not just a regular Black Af Black African or Black American or, or person. The owners. Do rest on Beyonce and her team because she needs to do the research. So far, she's saying that this is a gift to Africa. Why don't you do the proper research it takes? You certainly have the budget. She has the budget and you claim to be extolling her. So take the time out. Come to Africa. Come see the people for yourself. Get dirty. You know, try to be imperfect for a bit, Beyonce. Find out how the Africans want to be represented and how they should be represented. In fact, let us see from your visual album your truth, your unique experience and personal insight on this Africa in which you talk of and extol and you've drawn so much inspiration from. Not the narrative that still has been sold to you by the white man. Come on, man. Show us your Africa. So far, you say it's a gift. You're claiming this gift, but then 
we bought the album for the same price that the white man bought it. You were paid 30 million dollars for the Lion King album. Please, who do you think you're deceiving? Big guy! For me, I think that this is just also another calculative effort by Beyonce. This is the right time to put a black, you know, centric album because with the way the world's moving, BLM, Black Lives Matter, everybody fighting, you know, she's just like, yo, it's going to be guzzled up by everybody. Let's put this album now. Not a bad thing because, man, business is business. But at the same time, too, you, can, you get to wonder how far one will go to make profit, you know. She's always calculating. Her team is always calculating. But in the end, I will not blame the Americans or Beyonce or, you know, the Oyubo people for how we are represented because when you come to us, our own land, you will see that we are doing the same thing. We paint like ourselves like we're still walking around with painted faces and spears in our hands. And I mean, big up to Burner Boy. He just released his video, his video to his music, wonderful. And I mean, it's the same thing. You're seeing those warriors with their painted faces and their spears. It's the same thing. So if we're saying Beyonce is doing that, our own African giant is doing the same thing. Yo, guys, I gotta say, it's my time is up for that topic, but you should go check out Burner Boy's music. It's beautiful. I love it. You might not like it the first time. I didn't like it the first time. I thought it was okay, but I mean, the hype was too much. But I listened to it a second time and the third. No, listen to it a second time and the third time. Guys, by the fourth time, hey, you go the jam. Hey, that is it. Next on the news Festus Kayamo fighting the Senate. Because they are at war over who will chop our money. Honorable <laughs> Minister, Honorable Minister, is this this matter? Are you better than other ministers? That yes. this, this matter is straightforward. What we are doing here is constitutional. We are carrying out a constitutional responsibility. We want to ensure your efficiency. We want to make sure you are doing the right thing. While we are doing that, we have the constitutional responsibility also to expose corruption wherever we find. Why do you? Are you listen to me. 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 Listen to we have many ministers who came here, so please you can call it here. Yes, you can make it. Are you better than other ministers? Are you not getting here before you become a minister? We will take it on with the presidency. Are you better than other ministers? I like the fact that at least he's doing something good. He's doing something nice. Do you understand? Political leaders want to hijack 774 jobs. 74,000 jobs meant for poor Nigerians. Kayamo cries out. Sir? You must keep your words. You promised poor Nigerians transparency and they are looking up to you. Honorable sir, do very with your powers to stop them. If not, the purpose and core reasons for this beautiful initiative will not be harsh or lies. Cooking Cuckoo Day says, and who told you he doesn't have this his own list of potential beneficiaries? Olatunji says, Keyamo has been around in around in for a while he's a brilliant lawyer no doubt he is no naive not naive either i dare say you can't win with these people you join the party and therefore you must speak their language you just have to deal in their currents what are you saying he should bend and to suit them how niger won't take better now and they say you gave yourself the headache the instance that you said no to online application even if those you are targeting are illiterate, they can walk into the cafe and register. Thank you, says Dangwani Jr. I am K says, fire will consume them after milking us still want to take the peanut meat for us. Ogodo says, God, where your ID for Nigeria matter? These politicians are already rich now. Jeez, for crying out loud, people are suffering, Lord. Suffering. 
Lani, boss, I can I apply for this job, sir? Hmm. 774 jobs. This is from Sahara, Sahara Reporters. Nigerian lawmakers engage in rowdy session over 52 billion naira allocation. Sahara Reporters. The initiative was to employ 1,000 unskilled persons per local government area on a short-term engagement for the period of three months. Koka Dayo says, God, please do not make me president of Nigeria because ha, I will sentence all these so-called politicians and robbers to death by firing squad from Mbasanjo to the last. Wow, this madman called Kiyamu enter APC government and he lose all his deep integrity for money. Useless Sam. What are you saying, please? Did you actually know what's happening there? This is where you will see the National Assembly at work. Follow the money. Insecurity, unemployment, and poor infrastructure are major challenge. But the National Assembly would see that one. It's here you will see them. National Assembly has been bullying ministers who have always caved in. But in the ebullient F. Keyamo, who is Sam, the member of the Nigerian Senate and House of Nigeria, Labour committees have met their match. Thank you, Festus Kiyamo. Fisayo Soyombo says, Nigerian lawmakers have never walked any Labour minister out of a hearing because millions of Nigerians are unemployed. But they have walked Kiyamo out today for refusing to apologize after a heated exchange over the control of 774,000 jobs worth 20,000 naira per month. Priorities. Priorities. Well, Guys, we have come to the end of this video, but make sure to check out the next one which will be released in a couple of hours. So please click on that notification box button because man, we'll be talking about Jada Smith's love triangle and also Dr. Olufumilayo, who was accused of sexual misconduct on Twitter by a lady called Bola. Guys, eh? this won't go tofu. It don't tofu us come out because they trained for the whole week. <laughs> Anyways, this episode has been has been quite serious, so let's lighten it up with this video that I'm sending you guys to check. Amen. The views of heaven will come upon you. Amen. The views of heaven will surround you as mountain surrounds Jerusalem. Amen. So shall the blessing of God surround you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> you know what's killing me? The guy's voice is the loudest. Say, Amen. Anyways guys, please make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for all the love you showed on the last video. If you haven't watched, please check out all my previous posts. Thank you so much for all the love you guys show me. And welcome to all the new subscribers again. And guys, please give us a thumbs up because of course I said it before, we need it. Please share this video with all your friends and family and all the people in your circle. Bye.